Yo, welcome back ladies and gentlemen to a Q&A, questions and answers. We haven't done one of these in like five years or something, but we hit 700,000 subs recently. So I'd like to thank you all for that. And also I thought that was a good, good kind of, I don't know, milestone point to do a Q&A. Um, I have to leave my house in about two hours. So l let's make quick work of this. So firstly, are you a poet? Blah, blah, blah. For reals, what was your minor or major slash minor in college? If it was lengthy, if it was lengthy descriptions, you must have passed with flying colors. No, I left school at the age of 16, I think. 15 or 16, I don't remember. Well, I've studied a few short courses since, but I never went to college. For me, 100% um, a waste of time. That's literally, I left school because it was a waste of time. I'm not learning anything useful. And then I've been self-employed since I was like 17. I've got a major in life. That's the only important major. I've been ingesting Elder Scrolls content for years due to my love of the series and the fact that I'm a history buff and lore fills that ever-present hole in my soul. Uh, but for you, a content creator, what keeps bringing you back to doing lore of these series? What continues to drive you to dig for the tidbits and unspoken facts? It's more a quest. It's like I just have questions and then I go, what are the answers to those questions? And then it leads me to, you know, digging through lore for like a month. And then I'm like, what the f is this weird spider's web of random bits and pieces that all actually fit together? But the game doesn't let you know they fit together until you start digging around for a long time. It's it's just like um, all that's interesting. And then f figuring out how it all fits together. That's that's fun and interesting as well. One question I feel so alone in asking, why the only one who feels like the Dwemer had lavender hues of their skin? To me, it makes sense being cut off uh, from natural light. In Dice's paleness? I don't know what, uh, I'm dyslexic, so I don't know if that's a word or what the f*** it is. Um, blah, doo -doo -doo. Anyway, they don't have lavender skin. They have gray, gray goldy skin. There's a model for the Dwemer in Morrowind. Because in Morrowind, you can run into Dwemer ghosts. And to make a Dwemer ghost, they made a Dwemer model and then just made it transparent. So in the game files, there's actually a Dwemer model and they have like a... Yeah, okay, so it's kind of like... Oh, I don't know how to edit it in. I'm going to drag it on stream, uh, screen like I'm streaming. Basically, the Dwemer skin color is like a kind of yellow gray. And that's canon. That's an actual model in an actual game. You shouldn't look at your Grumbagon for, for um, skin hues because he has the corpus and he's like rotting. So his skin doesn't look like what most Duemo would look like. What do you do when you're not in office? Any hobbies? Also interested in what your career plans were before YouTube happened. Appreciate your videos. You got me through a year of... Mono... What? Mononucleosis. With my sanity intact. I'm glad. I'm glad I could do that for you. I don't know what that is, but it sounds pretty serious. When I'm not in office, any hobbies, basically just doing whatever I want. Socializing, going out about. There's no like, oh, I go and uh, I don't know, do archery once a week. There's none of that shit. Just float around. Uh, I think because I'm so ADD, I'm just like, oh, that's interesting right now. Let's do that. Uh, float over to the next thing. And then eventually it floats onto an Elder Scrolls topic. And <laughs> I start making a video. Interested in what your career plans were before YouTube happened. Career plans, I honestly, I never really plan anything. Like if I go overseas, I'm like, I'm going to Europe for six months. Oh, where are you going? I don't know. I'm landing in London and then I'm just floating across Europe for six months randomly. Uh, same with career. Just like, I don't know, something will happen. I'll figure something out. Just ride the wave, dude. Uh, I think from when I was like 14 or 15, I'm like, I'm going to own a bit. I'll run a, something to do with business. I'll just have a business that makes money. Um, and YouTube is my second business, I believe. It's the only one I do now, but beforehand I had an online business. Man, I miss your Q&A vids. They were always interesting and fun to watch. My question is, now that Skyrim Anniversary Edition brought a bunch of new content, will you be doing more guides and detective videos about them? Maybe lore about Elder Scrolls Blades as a fair part of the new things are based on it, or maybe about the Crimson Dricks? The Crimson Dirks? Anyway, uh, much love from Mexico. Uh, Skyrim Anniversary content, I don't know, it kind of like came out and everyone made videos for like a week or two. And then I personally haven't thought about Skyrim Anniversary Edition since. Uh, I haven't really seen any content based on it either. So nothing about the Anniversary Edition has like, I'm not lying in bed like, oh dude, that thing. Like I don't think about it. So probably not, I don't know. Again, who knows? Again, no plans, man. Just fucking whatever. Two questions if you don't mind. What's your favorite Easter egg uh, that you've covered in the Elder Scrolls series and your favorite Easter egg in Oblivion? Favorite Easter egg in Oblivion would be the, the hoe, the dirty hoe. 
There's a unique weapon that's a hoe, like the gardening tool. And it's just called hoe, but it's got um, effects on it that give diseases to people when you hit them with it. Uh, it's got a unique disease called Itchy Bridge. So it's like, it's a hoe that spreads STDs. And favorite Easter egg in all, well, just ever, or in the Elder Scrolls series? Probably the hoe, it's just funny. Do you think Bethesda learned their lesson with Fallout 76? It's good now, in my opinion, and maybe have high, and maybe have high hopes for Starfield in Elder Scrolls 6. So I think Bethesda learned their lesson from Fallout 76. I don't know, what, what lesson? What's the lesson to learn? Well, just as of recently, a bunch of supposed leaks came out um, about the, oh, if you're wondering why I'm dressed like an Eskimo, it's because it's freezing in Sydney at the moment. I've got the heater on my hands and toes are just literal bits of ice currently. Anyway, Fallout 76, I don't know. Hopefully they never try and do anything like that again because it can suck. Starfield, Elder Scrolls 6. Honestly, who knows? They've changed so much as a company. They've lost so many old school staff who made the games that we love or love that BGS made. They've gained a bunch of studios. They've been bought by Microsoft. I mean, who knows? Like the, the whole culture and setup is so different. So we'll have to wait till Starfield comes out to really get a gauge of what the fuck is going on at BGS. Only 700k. Definitely deserve more um, than that as you're one of the best Bethesda games channels and probably the best when it comes to comes into going into extreme detail and effort in your videos anyone seeing this anyone seeing this and are a fan give camel some help and share the channel to your elder scrolls and fallout fan friends if they haven't already heard of him so what was the question only 700k well it's probably more now but i don't know how to answer that yes 700k i don't remember why i'm subscribed to you but when you look at the person you are right now what are you proudest of um oh just having built something myself, like that being the YouTube channel. You know, lots of people try to do YouTube. Lots of people would like to do YouTube and never try. And it was funny when I started talking to my more tech savvy friends, I'm like, oh, I want to start making YouTube videos. What recording thing? Can you help me build a computer? Blah, blah, blah. And every single person, and I guess rightfully so, was just like, Dude, why would you even try doing that? No, no one, I think, when did I start? 2014? In 2014, my friend was like, dude, everyone that makes money on YouTube now, like, that's it. Like, no one else can get to that point anymore. So yeah, no one thought I could. And again, that is totally, totally plausible. I'm not like, oh, I'll show you. But again, I was just like, yeah, I could probably do that. Give it a crack. And here we are, eight years later. Kind of a personal one. If you weren't making Bethesda Con on YouTube, what would you make? This question could also double as besides Bethesda games, what are your favorite games? Do you mean if I didn't make Bethesda content, what else would I make on YouTube? Or if I didn't do YouTube, what would I do? Uh, if I didn't make Bethesda content, I don't I have no idea. I am making Bethesda content and have done since day one. So I've never had to thought of, think about it in any serious regard. So who knows? What are my other favorite games? At the just random shit like, like Hearthstone, where it's just like, oh, I've got 40 minutes until I don't know, I have to go somewhere or whatever. I can play a game of Hearthstone. When I was a teenager playing the Halo games, it was fucking sick. World of Warcraft, I played a lot of World of Warcraft. Even like, if I look back fondly, I uh, loved the Pokemon series. But again, I haven't played a Pokemon game for like 20 years. What made you decide to do full... What, wait, uh, what made you decide to do full depth videos on video game lore such as you do? In a documentary style as well, I'm certain the process is very time consuming. Uh, how long would you say you spend on your videos and putting them together? Research included. Uh, hundreds, hundreds of hours, if not thousands of hours. Ooh. And what made me do it? I, I, it was just interest. It was like, oh, uh, like if there's something that I run across in a game or a question I have, and I'm like, what is that? Like, who is that guy in that castle that says some weird thing you never see again? I'll think it like I, you know, I'll be at, I'll be at the supermarket just being like, what the fuck? Who the fuck is that? And lying in bed at night just going, what the is that thing blah, blah, blah. then i'm like okay if i'm thinking about this so much and i want to know the answer so much i am sure that even if someone has never even i don't know heard of the thing that i'm looking into when i go what is this who is this thing let's find out they'll go i don't know what this is but this is interesting so for at least for me and the way i make youtube videos it's much less planned out it's just like oh this topic jump on that um and then the way i don't know my videos are structured like the documentary style are they i don't know <laughs> it's just how it happens 
Will you ever consider making generic lore videos for the Elder Scrolls? Not Elder Scrolls Detective or CCC. I was thinking something like you explaining the different events that happened in the lore. For example, maybe you could make a video about the Three Alliance, Ebonheart, Daggerfall, Dominion. Just, uh, just a suggestion. Okay, so personally, I find straight lore really boring. I... Uh, it's kind of like... Law is kind of like, like if you want to become an architect, you can't just jump straight and go willy nilly and start designing houses that look cool. Cause it's like, oh, there's no structural integrity. We need a support beam here, blah, blah, blah. You know, all that you need to know all the maths. You need to know engineering and all that shit. And I feel like law is all the engineering stuff. And then the videos I make are more the architecture bit where I build a cool thing. So I find law necessary. And it is interesting, but I find using the lore to discover something new or join things together, I find that much more interesting. Lore is like the puzzle pieces, and I could, you know, just be like, hey, let's make a video about this puzzle piece. Or I can be like, I've been thinking about this thing for a week and I can't get it out of my head, so let's go and find a hundred puzzle pieces and put them together and you go, holy shit, and you get the picture at the end and go, fuck. Because I have made some straight lore videos in the past. I find really difficult because there's no room for, when it comes to writing, there's no room for a creative license because it's just either l exactly what is said in the lore or not. And if it's not, then it's not canon. So it's just me like trudging through Wikipedia pages in the Imperial Library, like taking excerpts of information. It's just, I don't know, I've creatively, I find that really not creative at all. And for me, I need to like come up with a thing. I need to be creating a thing and not just copying and pasting chunks of text into a some kind of order that I can then make a, a video and read that off. Not to say it won't happen, but um, like I started with the Elder Scrolls lore series and I was just like, oh, I, I really didn't enjoy making those videos much. But applying lore to answer a question like in an Elder Scrolls detective video, that for me is hot content. Hi Camelot, I'm a big fan. Cheers from Poland. What is your second favorite lore after the Elder Scrolls? Probably Warcraft. Of all topics you've done deep dives on, which surprised you the most for having more lore and slash or interesting details and what have you done a deep dive on that you were shocked at how shallow it was anything i've done a deep dive on a deep dive on that was shockingly shallow i would just not it's all the stuff i didn't make videos on so I'm like oh that's interesting and then there's just like one sentence in a book that explains it or you open the wiki page or something and there's literally no information on it so I'm, which of course then leads to me going, oh, there's not enough content to make a video. So there's heaps of stuff like that. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But the most surprising one would be in terms of its depth would be the Augur of Dunlane. Um, I was like, who the f*** is the Augur of Dunlane? And I was like, okay, I'll make a video on the Augur of Dunlane. It'll probably be like 12, 15 minutes. And then it ended up as a, th I think it took me three or four months to make that video. And it ended up at three hours and people love it, which I'm very um, glad for because you don't want to work on something for four months and then people go, boo, what is this? Um, but that was shockingly deep. Do you think Bethesda will have a canon ending to the Skyrim Civil War or do you think they'll just keep Skyrim divided but in a ceasefire due to the Greybeard's peace conference? Uh, I don't think there'll be a canon. If there is, I feel like if there is a canon thing, it'll either be play a major part in something in the Elder Scrolls 6 or... They'll just like never mention it and you won't know. Like in Morrowind, uh, you play the Nerevarine and you can choose between the th three houses, Redoran, Hlalu or Tildani. The Dunmer great houses. And I'm pretty sure in the lore, it's just like, oh, the Nerevarine we think joined a house. So, so it might be something like that. Like, oh, there was like a civil war, but the, you know, it simmered down in Skyrim. And that was like years ago and not this province and a million other things that happened. So no one gives a f What is your ideal magic system in an Elder Scrolls game? And what suggestions do you have to make it even better? Ideal magic system is just, I think more spells and more creative spells. Like that transmute spell where you can turn ore into another ore. Like really not, it doesn't have that much application, but it's cool. You're like, oh, that's sick that I can do that. I think just random shit like that. Just weird spells that may not be like meta and the most powerful thing ever but just kind of fun weird and wacky like in elden ring there's so many fucking spells and abilities and stuff and even things where you're like hey it's not good but it's cool it's cool that i have the option to use that so yeah i think just like fire lightning frost is pretty like that is the most bare bones boring dog shit uh even tomorrow when you have like poison spells and you know stuff like vampiric drain uh it like 
Is that something you get as a vampire? I think in Oblivion, there was a spell that was like a, an absorb life kind of thing. Anyway, they, like there's a million things you can do with magic. And I feel like what they did in Skyrim was really, really, really bare bones. I have two questions. Since the empire is clearly based on Rome and bandits seem to inhabit so many locations, do you believe if the game took place in an earlier time frame, like maybe late second and early third, it would give it a more natural feel to the world? I don't know what that means. Natural feel. Like having the development of technology go at a more natural pace and major events happening within a realistic period, such as the rise and fall of many more major empires and language and cultural development, etc. Furthermore, do you think the series would work better and feel more unique if it had more of an ancient antiquity look than a medieval look? So many fantasy novels and stories use. Um, like having development of technology. Well, what's interesting about the Elder Scrolls universe is technology is getting worse as time goes on. Like if you look at the Duomo, that was like 5,000 years ago. They literally had like giant robots and shit. And now, the you know, there's little guys living in stone houses on farms. I gotta take care of my sheep. It's like 5,000 years ago, there was literally robot armies. Now this question about ancient antiquity look, I'm not sure what that means. Ancient antiquity look. Which, when, like which culture, when, ancient... I typed in ancient antiquity and it's just like all Greek, ancient Greek stuff. Uh, which is like exactly what the um, empire looks like. Cyrodiil, well, the uh, imperial city. I was going to say the White Gold Tower, which is the tower in the Imperial City. Okay, most of the, these questions, I, I'm not too sure what you mean, but I think they do a pretty good job with uh, making the cultures look different. Like, if you look at the Argonian architecture in ESO, it's, well, the ancient Argonian architecture is all like Mayan pyramids and stuff, which isn't, you know, classic fantasy medieval look. I think you feel like the games are more classic fantasy medieval uh, than they are. Like, if you look at Morrowind, Morrowind was fucking crazy alien, and I loved that. But then we had Oblivion, which is Cyrodiil, of course, the Imperials, which is just like random fucking white dudes and white dude medieval looking stuff. And then we had Skyrim. Oh, more random white dudes and random white dude looking culture stuff. But you know, if we go to Valenwood or elsewhere, or Morrowind again, or Black Marsh, or somewhere like that the look and feel of the cultures are s totally not standard fantasy medieval look. So kind of, unfortunately, that's just the areas of Tamriel we've been given recently is the areas that do happen to look like standard basic medieval stuff. With, of course, you know, the Elder Scrolls twist or whatever, but it's nowhere near as alien as it could have been or as alien as Morrowind was. What is your single most favorite quest from Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim? I've been a hardcore Elder Scrolls fan since 2007 and I love your videos. Thank you very much. Um, oh, honestly, I can't even, like, think of a name of a quest from any three of those games. I'm really bad with favorite stuff. Favorite quests. Ugh. I really like the... Oh, I don't... I don't even know if I really like it. I just think it's cool. Um, the quest in Morrowind where you have to rebuild the shrine to Malakath, I believe. The one where you can get uh, gold brands and then turn it into Elton brand. Oblivion? Oh, yeah, honestly, I've, I have really bad memory with quests. Maybe the hack dirt one, that was pretty cool. Actually, the quest was dog shit, but the, the hack dirt itself and that whole thing, the deep ones, that was super cool. And Skyrim, favorite quest in Skyrim. The um, Stones of Baron's Eye. <laughs> <laughs> Will we get deep lore videos about gods in the Elder Scrolls universe comparing Aedra, Daedra, Red Guardian, Khajiit gods? I really need one. Again, that kind of falls into just straight lore stuff, which is a bit like... <sighs> to me, anyway, you know? Like, I sometimes watch, like, Fudge Mobber videos and stuff where it's just a lore video. And it's a good video, and it's a good lore video, but for me, that kind of content doesn't excite me. I like having to look up lore so I can understand some other weird question that I have rather than just reading lore like I'm reading like a, I don't know, like a, a science dictionary or something. So I probably would not make a video like that. Do you think there will be any more Elder Scrolls spin-offs in the future to further expand the IP? What sort of spin-offs would you want? I really hope they do do more spin-offs. Um, I think it's really like a really good idea to give your IP to a, like a smaller part of your studio or to a smaller studio that you work with um, and just make little games like uh, the Elder Scrolls Redguard, the Elder Scrolls Adventure Redguard, the Elder Scrolls Legend Battle Spire, and of course the three Elder Scrolls Travels games, none of which have I played because I can't fucking get them. Actually, if anyone knows how I can get get and play the Elder Scrolls Travels Stormhold, I think it's called, the Elder Scrolls Travels Dawnstar and the Elder Scrolls Travels Shadow Key, hit me up. 
hit me up. I want to play them. I want to make videos on them. I just cannot get them. I got Shadow Key. I can't get it to work. The other two, impossible. But in short, yes, I think doing spin-off games is great. If they're going to take four years between major releases and now they have the Fallout IP, Starfield and Elder Scrolls, but then we're looking at 12 years between releases from the same IP. So yes, give another studio, give someone else the IP so they can make a little thing where it's just, you know, like Elder Scrolls Redguard set in Stross Mackay and there's just cool stories, cool characters and stuff. And we just get to explore that and it's going to contain a little story. I would much prefer that than just not anything for, again, 12 years or whatever it is. I mean, what, Skyrim came out 11 years ago and we ain't seeing the Elder Scrolls 6 anytime soon. So yes, I think doing something like little spin-offs is a fantastic idea. I got a question. Do you ever think we're going to get the array of Khajiit uh, to be able to play as? No, I'm not asking to play as a main, but every other one. Man, that would be fun. I hope so. I do hope so. Um, I don't... I I'm going to say no, I doubt that's ever going to happen, but I hope so. If you're unaware, the Khajiit have a, I think there's 16 different, or is it 12? Basically, depending on what the moons are doing, when a Khajiit is born, it will come out from anything from a house cat to a saber cat the size of a mammoth. And all the different types of Khajiit are, you know, still the intelligent can talk and do stuff. But yeah, the the body shapes range from house cat to mammoth sized cat. And if they did that, they would have to, you know, if you could play as a mammoth, a mammoth sized saber cat Khajiit, how? How would that work? You wouldn't fit into doorways. You wouldn't be able to go through caves. Like there's a whole bunch of technical issues that come with that. If you played as a little house cat, you'd be able to fit into spaces the devs didn't want players to get into. So I doubt it. I think they're always going to keep them the humanoid shape. Did you make A++++ on all your English writing papers in school because you're a true wordsmith? No, I'm dyslexic. English was my worst uh, subject by far. What do you use to make and edit videos on? I always liked the way you stitched together clips and put over put over sound over it. Put over sound over it? Uh, with a rel relatively low editing video. I've been considering making some Elder Scrolls videos myself and I'd prefer I'll just talk with a few pictures on screen as that's not my preference to watch. And I think making something you would watch yourself is a good standard to hold things to. Yes, whenever you're making a video, make a video you would wanna watch. And then again, if you wanna watch that video, someone else probably wants to watch that video. Um, I started making Skyrim videos when I was looking for a video that had all the unique one-handed swords in Skyrim. That video didn't exist, so I thought, Fuck it, I'll make the video. And then I did, and then you know, it's got like 3 million views or something. Again, if you want to watch something, someone else will probably want to watch it too. What do I use to edit my video? Okay, so I record with uh, NVIDIA Shadowplay and I edit with Premiere Pro. And if you want to see how I make videos, uh, watch my Twitch stream because um, most of the time when I edit, I do it on stream. So you can literally watch me edit and see see what I'm doing. Is Bethesda interested in maintaining uh, the ESO or is it hiding from us, Tez6? And if it comes at all, Tez6 should be bigger than any game already in the market. Okay, so will Bethesda maintain ESO? I believe so. Is it hiding us from Tez6? I don't think it's hiding us from, or like hiding it from us. Like, is ESO delaying the Elder Scrolls 6? And I don't think so. It's a different studio that makes ESO and Tez, or the Elder Scrolls mainline series. Um, I hope that when it comes to crunch time with the Elder Scrolls 6 pro 6's production, they kind of put ESO, like pull the handbrake on ESO and get that whole team that has been working in the Elder Scrolls universe since 2014 to help make the Elder Scrolls 6. One, it will make it happen faster and you'll have a bunch of experienced people in the universe uh, doing it. And will Tez 6 be bigger than any game in the market? Or who knows? Who can predict that? Did you ever at any point think in your life that you'd be making YouTube videos talking about one of the greatest universes to ever exist with and to other like minds? How does it honestly feel to do all this? Like, do you actually enjoy it or would you rather make, say, gameplay content instead? Where would you love the channel to go? Um, look, I would like the channel to... It's a hard question. Oh, it's... Okay. I want the channel to get tons of views and I want the channel to get tons of subs because views and subs are a reflection of the quality of the content, right? Like, I don't seek subscribers and I don't seek getting views per se, but I do because if the, I do get subs and I do get lots of views, that means that the product I'm producing, uh, people like, and that's, that's what I want really. To a degree, I want views because, you know, it's my income. I would like the channel to con 
I would like to keep making content that helps people and people like it, they enjoy it, helps them in what it like, you know, they got time to fill and it's just something entertaining or it helps them because they don't know how to finish a quest, don't know how to get an item, blah, 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 blah whatever it is. Or they've been th wondering about some weird Elder Scrolls questions uh, for ages and then I answer those questions in a video. How does it honestly feel to do all this? Yeah, it's fun. Like it's really hard work, but I like working really hard, especially when it's something you genuinely enjoy um i think it's very easy to you know knuckle down and grind and get in there deep when it's something you would be doing anyway like that's the point it's at where like it, when i had uh, previous jobs when i was like 17 i'd be at the job but any free like five seconds i had i'd be on my phone like looking up weird Elder Scrolls stuff or World of Warcraft stuff or whatever so it's kind of like what where my brain goes anyway so if i can do that full time and make money from it. Dude, it's fucking sick. Like if you're obsessed with horses and all you ever thought about was horses and all you ever wanted to do was ride a horse and then somehow you got a job where you could ride a horse all the time, that'd be fucking cool, right? Oh, that's what this is. YouTube is my horse and I'm I'm riding it. Would I rather make gameplay content instead? No, I've done some gameplay stuff and it's just not, I don't find it creatively fulfilling at all. It can be fun to stream. And you know, f around, but in terms of like a here you go subscriber base, here's a thing, and it's just me playing a game, like that doesn't like if I made a gameplay video and uploaded it, I would not look at my phone for like an hour and just be sitting there going, I know this this sucks. Like that is a shit piece of content. Um, and that's just like if that's what you do when you love doing that, great. I'm glad you do. But for me and my channel and my content, whatever, yeah, I wouldn't be happy with myself releasing that as content. Not to say I'll never do that. I feel like there needs to be a purpose to it, you know? Like if I if I get hands-on with a game before anyone's seen it, I'll upload that gameplay because it's actually interesting, like, oh shit. Or if it's an older game like Battle Spy or something that most people haven't played, it would be an interesting experience for them. It's like, hey, here's my gameplay video of Skyrim. Like, I don't care about that content, therefore why would anyone else? It's the opposite of what I was saying before, like make content you would want to watch yourself and I wouldn't want to watch that. Would you shave off five years off your life for the Elder Scrolls to come out this year and it also be the most well-made Elder Scrolls game yet? Question mark. Uh, I don't think so, no. The fact that we exist, any like anyone alive ever is... Oh, dude, there's like a 1 in 120 million chance that you're the sperm that gets the egg. Um, and then, you know, the universe has been around for, what, 14 billion years? I can't even remember. And then we're alive in this little and little speck of sand in the, the vast beach of the universe or whatever. And you only live once, so shaving five years off, most people don't live to like 80, what, more than 5% of my life for a game to come out. No, I wouldn't do that. Do you think a system of randomized NPC outfits, including jewelry and baubles they actually wear, would enrich the Elder Scrolls 6's NPCs beyond their face, voice, and story? I think it would be more interesting if NPCs actually changed outfits from time to time uh, or from different saves. I don't, I don't... I think it could be good, but anything random is never better than handcrafted, so... Therefore, I would say I would prefer handcrafted over any anything randomized. Which member of Fudge Muppet should I primarily ship you with? Uh, that would be Drew. Are you looking into playing Skywind once it's finished? Sure am. How do you feel about the rise in popularity of Australian metal bands? Yeah, it's good. The only band I can think of is Northlane. Um, I would say it would have said Thy Art Is Murder like five years ago, but I don't know, they keep releasing the same song. Does Campbell believe we will ever get a game in the first era slash Akavir. Uh, I don't know about first era, but Akavir, yes. Like in the grand scheme of the rest of time, I'm sure there will be an Elder Scrolls game set at Akavir. Which of the races or species of the Elder Scrolls do you think you'd be if you were slingshotted into their reality? As I am now, it would be Nord, obviously. Um, if I got to choose, probably it would have to be an elf because they live way longer. So you're an elf. Which Tamrielic race slash culture do you feel personally connected to the most and why? Uh, probably Nord stuff. I grew up reading like Norse mythology stuff. And of course, you know, the Nords in the Elder Scrolls are somewhat based on uh, real life Nordic culture. So probably, probably Nord. Which Elder Scrolls city would you choose to live an ordinary life in? Mournhold. So I can go and worship Amalexia. Even though she's dead, of course, but nah, whatever. Oh boy. But as for a question, how did you get into the Elder Scrolls or Bethesda games in general? Like, was it recommended to you or was it random purchase and you got hooked? 
for me uh thanks for the, the little story but i have limited time oh my god i do have limited time as for a question um i went to my friend tor's house and he was playing morrowind and i was sitting there watching him and i thought the game was balmora i thought the town of balmora was the entire game and at the time they were the most mind-blowing graphics i've ever seen i was like what the f is this and then he left Balmora and started walking up a hill. I'm like, what, where, 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 where? I'm like, what are you doing? And then a cliff racer came and I thought it was a, I'm like, guys, oh, a dragon. And we both were like, dragon, dragon. Oh. And he walked to Fort Moonmoth or Frost, what the fuck is next door to Balmora. And once he opened the map, I was just like, what the fuck? And I went home and went, mom, mom, buy me Morrowind. And she did. If it takes a Riverwood chicken and a half, uh, a d what if it takes a riverwood chicken and a half a day and a half to lay an egg and a half how long does it take a reichling to shingle dragon's reach with cheese wheels see this comment what's your favorite elder scrolls theory and why uh, uh favorites i'm dude favorite i'm the worst of favorites okay uh pelinor white strike being a cyborg from the future favorite and least favorite tez race oh god favorites favorite and least favorite tez race class and sign stone race nord class i make my own class and sign stone would be steed because you can carry more stuff if you were to step into the shoes of any playable or non-playable elder scrolls character who would it be and why much love from canada uh devate fear because he's the oldest and smartest I just looked at the um, recording program and realized I'm like, I've sunk. I'm gonna sit up straight. Do you plan on releasing some more music in the future? Would love to hear New Europe too. Electric Boogaloo eventually. Um, yeah, I would like to in at some point in the future. I've written music basically since I made that New Europe thing. Uh, yeah, that'd be cool. I just haven't done it or had time really. Cause it took, it took a lot of time. Like any spare time I had went straight into that. How did you first get into the Elder Scrolls? I was at my friend Tor's house and I saw him playing it. I went, what the f This is unbelievable. What's your best guess uh, as to why Master and Secunda disappeared and how did they return? Who knows and who knows? I've never, I know it happens in the lore, but I've never looked into it. I have no idea. Has the way for testing dampened your hype for the game? I don't really have any hype for the game. It'll be, I'm sure it'll be cool. And it's just, it's so far away. There's no point really thinking about it at all. What is your favorite type of cheese? funny this i hated blue cheese my whole life and maybe even started this year there was some blue cheese at a family thing and i ate some and i was like this is fucking sick so i'll probably say blue cheese what's a web beast you'd like to see uh for the elder scroll 6 any possibility for wear camels <laughs> probably probably not there's probably not going to be any wear camels because they've never been mentioned what are they wear lions wear boars wear sharks is something my says but i don't think we should believe that. We're bats. Honestly, all of them. Bring them all in. Why does the Ebony Knight want to go to Sovereign Guard when he is clearly a Red Guard, not at all? Maybe there is something about the afterlife that we don't know. Perhaps Sovereign Guard is the only real afterlife. No, we go to other afterlives in ESO, I believe. Why does he want to? I don't know, because he's a. Because people always want what they can't get. How long have you been growing your hair and beard? I think 2015, maybe 2014. I did the world's greatest shave. No, maybe that's not true. No, no, no. I cut my own hair and f***ed it up. And the barber basically just had to shave my head. I did do the world's greatest shave once, but that's not why I had a shaved head this time. And then since then, I just grew my hair. I had it trimmed maybe like three times. But when I get it trimmed, like she takes off like a lot, a lot of hair. And now it's sitting. Nipple is, nipples are here. Belly button's here. Yeah, it's kind of between close to the belly button then the old nip there seven ish and beard i don't know that comes out and then i shave it and it comes i've cut it actually the answer to both these questions are since the day i was born do you think the elder scrolls 6 will feature any uh, continents besides tamriel no but if it is set in high rock slash hammerfell if it's set in hammerfell any if it's set anywhere as long as hammerfell's there i think yakuda could potentially be a DLC place, which is of course a different continent. And don't know if you know this, but Yakuda is still there. Yakuda did not sink literally. Yakuda is still there. You can see it in the Elder Scrolls Online if you go to the coast and area in Daggerfall, the name of which I can't remember. Whatever like the southwesternmost 
side of Daggerfall is, stand on the beach there, look to the horizon, you can see Yakuta. Also, in the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion, the Lighthouse Keeper says he takes people in his boat to blah, 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 and Yakuta. Do you watch any other Elder Scrolls related content? If so, what are some channels, videos you watch? Uh, not really, but I often, like if I'm driving, I have to drive a lot recently to Wollongong. I live in Sydney, Wollongong is like, I don't know, in 90 minutes to two hours away, depending on what the traffic's like, one way. Um, and oftentimes I'll just chuck on like a Fudge Muppet podcast. Alpha Wolves, I've noticed one and only one. When escaping Helgen in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, the first fight with the wolves along the river opposite Anissa's cabin on the way to Riverwood, the player comes across three wolves some of the time. When this happens, one is large and brown and is named Alpha Wolf. My question is, do these Alpha Wolves appear anywhere else in the game? I believe the Alpha Wolf was an E3 only thing. Uh, Skyrim Alpha Wolf. Alpha Wolves. Trivia. Alpha Wolves do not naturally appear anywhere in Skyrim and can only be summoned by the use of console commands, as E3 demo marker must be enabled for it to spawn in its original location near Embershard Mine. They are, however, depicted in Skyrim's loading screens. In part one of the Skyrim demo footage from Bethesda, the Dragonborn is seen fighting an Alpha Wolf. Okay. So it's in the game files, so you probably have a mod or something that, that reactivates it. If you could live in any fictional universe, movie, game, book, or anything else, which universe would you choose and why? Um, uh, ooh, somewhere where I could live forever in peace. And by peace, I don't mean like, leave me alone, let me die in peace, live in peace, whatever. You know, just somewhere where terrible things don't happen and you could live forever. And if you decided not to live forever, you could also kill yourself. I feel like living forever is... I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll do that. But then who knows? Who knows? You would go insane probably after like a thousand years. You'd go fucking bananas. Are you the one the boat dropped off? Odd to see the boat arrive at this time of day. Hope the Imperials treated you okay. I swear they took my ring. Fargoth, I gave you your ring back, motherfucker. You are making CCC videos for Oblivion currently. Any idea if Morrowind or even Fallout is on the table? Granted, it'd be far in the future after Oblivion, I guess. Um, the main reason I didn't make Oblivion of Morrowind ones previously is because there's a lack of environmental storytelling content and that did rear its head when I was making the Oblivion CCC that I made a few months ago. I was like, I don't know if there's enough to make a video here. So Morrowind honestly probably won't happen. Like if you go into Morrowind and just run around the open world, there is, there really isn't much in terms of like you just running across a thing like, oh my God, what is this? Random thing I found on the ground. The, the tech wasn't up for that. Fallout, I did one Fallout 1 once in like 2016, I think, the start of 2016. And that was hard. It's a Fallout 4 one and there's almost too much stuff in the world. Like every step you take, oh my God, there's a toaster on the ground. Oh, there's a bathtub over there. Oh, look, there's a skeleton there. Holy shit, I've covered 0.1% of this area and I found like 10 things. So yeah, I don't know, I get Just whatever I want to do at any given time, is what I'll make because that would be the best content I could make because it's the thing I'm actually super into at the time. Um, and Fallout CCC, I've never thought about it since. Why are Dwemer Ruins names so hard to pronounce? They're not. It's just like throwing Scrabble down a staircase. Bethunjbunj. Thousands of years later, the Dragonborn is reincarnated into the year 2077 and the bombs drop, causing a nuclear winter. Does the Dovakin ghoulify and become a ghoul or does he die? What the fuck is that question? Why was Fallout New Vegas and Oblivion so good? Peak Bethesda games. Well, Bethesda didn't make Fallout New Vegas. Obsidian did. And why was Oblivion so good? It just was. It's good. Good timing. What is your favorite mod for Oblivion and Skyrim besides graphics and Sky UI? Well, the only mods I use really are graphics mods, so that would leave the unofficial patches. There it is. When is the Elder Scrolls 6 going to be released? 2023 will be Starfield, so probably 2027, four year gap, I would say. Are you familiar with the Dragonborn Saga? Formerly used it for uh, an amazing fan fiction of Skyrim? No. Any fan fiction stuff I don't read, purely because there's too much canon stuff already. So I don't want to start filling my head with things that aren't canon, and then I'll get stuff confused. Two mighty foes stand against each other, but who would win? An unlikely chicken or get fing. Do you get to the cloud district very often? You're about to fucking 
Give me three bands to get into the camel mindset. Okay, I don't know about bands, but um, okay. Firstly, there's a YouTube channel called Cryo Chamber. Listen to Cryo Chamber. They make ambient. It's more dark ambient and neutral ambient. Whenever I'm writing or I'm just sitting and thinking, I like to not listen to like a podcast or something where people are talking because then it I'm thinking about what they're saying and not what I need to think about. And also music with like a beat and lyrics and shit. I find myself kind of concentrating on that. Whereas I find ambient music to, or dark ambient, whatever, cryo chamber to be this kind of, it like puts me in a blank room and the soundscape is this kind of canvas for my thoughts to appear and be like, oh, like it gets me in the zone, I guess. It is the zone. It creates the zone for me to flow into what I'm doing. So yeah, cryo chamber is a YouTube channel that is comp it's kind of like, a, I think it's, I don't actually know if it's a label label, but it's a YouTube channel where tens of different dark ambient artists upload their stuff or get their stuff uploaded to three other bands um i would say opeth opeth is some good shit demi borgir there you go there's three what's your opinion on that thing the guys wrote in the game about stuff will elder scrolls 6 be the last game in the series I highly doubt that. I do think that the Elder Scrolls 6 will be the last game that Todd Howard is the the lead guy on. Just because he's getting old, man. He's been the lead dude for, you know, all the games that I make videos on. So I don't necessarily want him to quit, but I feel like it's very intense for him. Like all memes aside, I think Todd sacrifices a lot of his life. I'm sure it's super enjoyable most of the time. I remember once I think for Fallout 4's release in an interview he was doing, he was like, oh, his, his wife said like, oh, this is the last time you, you're like crunching a game like this because you haven't come on holiday with us for like 15 years. Like, ooh. <laughs> so I'm paraphrasing, something like that. But you know, I don't know how old Todd is, but Starfield's coming out next year and then we'll probably be four years till The Elder Scrolls 6. And I think at that point, that will be like, there's Todd's legacy. Maybe he'll work on like Starfield 2. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But will Elder Scrolls 6 be the last game in the series? Honestly, no one can say yes or no to that. But will it be? But dude, probably not. They've built up this IP that sold tens of millions of copies. Like, why would you scrap the Elder Scrolls IP? And hey, let's build a new one. It's like, why? We have an already existing IP with like 30 years of lore. Why would you, why would you dish that? Favorite Elder Scrolls quest of all time? Um, oh my god. These fucking, these favorites are just the hardest. Whatever I said earlier, I can't even remember. What will the next CCC be about? Curious curiosities, of course. What the really? What is the connection? However momentary, tangential, tangential, whatever that word is, or otherwise between you and the Fudge Puppet crew, we are content creators who make very similar content and we live in the same city and we hang out. Did y'all Balgruff uh, kill his son's mother with the ebony blade? I fucking hope so. Tell us your shampoo and conditioner secrets. You use the suave for men seven in one, don't you? No, I use Olaplex. How have you been, my man? Yeah, pretty good. Cold. Fucking like bitterly cold. Who crossed the lake first, the chicken or the mud crab? Your fucking comment. Will you make any Elden Ring videos? No, I don't plan on it. Typer Septum is a Reachman, yes or yes? Uh, Typer Septum being a Reachman is a Reach, man. What's your 16 personalities MBTI type? Okay, so I don't know if I'm a psychopath or a complicated man, but I've taken this test four times and I've gotten four different personalities each time. What is your favorite beverage? Water. You think they roast marshmallows at witch burnings? I don't know if marshmallows existed when they were burning witches. Chunky or creamy peanut butter? So in Australia, we have crunchy or smooth, which I'm guessing crunchy is the same as chunky and creamy is the same as smooth. And if that's the case, crunchy, chunky, the thick one with peanuts in it. How does one join the Camel Illuminati? You're already part of it. Hamburger or hot dog style? Uh, hamburger. But then again, you can't deep throw it off. The only time I eat a hot dog is at my friend Jesse's house who makes hot dogs for some reason. I mean, they, they taste good, but I don't think I've ever, I've never seeked a hot dog. Hamburgers on the other hand, all the time. Are you a vampire? Uh, probably. What's the story behind the name Camel Works? It is an anagram of my actual name. Do androids dream of electric sheep? I don't know. It's irrelevant because they don't exist. Do you play any Sonic games? I've never played a Sonic game, no. How does a camel work? Vigorously. How thick are your thighs in centimeters, please? Could probably actually figure this out. If I get this, wrap this around my thigh. Are you meant to flex when you measure this? All right, that's, I gotta, I've gotta measure that now. Luckily I have this 40 centimeter ruler that my dad gave me. 
I don't know when they started slash when they stopped making 40 centimeter rulers, but okay, that's 40 centimeters plus 54 centimeters, give or take. So my thighs aren't thick. I don't have thick thighs. What happened to your monthly lives? If you mean the monthly Q and A's I used to do, it's exhausting. So you got to sit down, set up a camera, get all the questions, film it, edit it. And once a month, like I oftentimes make videos that take more than a month to make. So I would have like three Q and A's back to back as my most recent uploads. And also it's the same fucking questions every time. What's the name Camel Works come from? What's your favorite unique weapon? Who's your favorite Daedric God? What's your favorite race? What's your favorite province? What's your favorite this? What's your favorite that? What's your favorite favorite thing? What's your favorite game? What's your favorite favorite? How are you doing? I am just fine. Cold. I'm fucking cold. Is it possible that the Dwemer didn't so much disappear, but their souls were bound to their dwarven machines and they all have soul gems in them majority of the time. So, uh, oh, thoughts, maybe the Dwemer's souls were souls trapped to the machines, losing their intelligence and desperately trying to maintain their cities. That is actually one of the less plausible theories, but it is one of the theories about what happened to the Dwemer is that their souls went into their machines. What is the meaning of life? The meaning of life is to have some fun. Again, the probability of you or anyone else that ever lived existing is one in millions. So you, as, the, as soon as you're born, you've already won the lottery. You were the luckiest person ever to just be born. And we live for, I don't know, 70, 80 years. And we're in a universe that's fucking like... I don't even know how far away the edge of the universe is. I was reading about a star the other day and it is 300 million light years away. If we, if you were traveling at the speed of light, it would take 300 million years to get there. Like the, that, the, <laughs> the idea that like humans are cosmically special, which I guess we kind of are in terms of, you know, there's no life. There's no observable life any, anywhere that's observable. But like, dude, we're just little fucking atoms on a giant thing that we really don't know much about in an area that's incomprehensibly big for the smallest little fucking nano fraction of time that's already gone by and will go by. So with that in mind, you can go, oh, fuck, what's the point? It's like, well, there really isn't a point. Therefore, just have some fucking fun, man. Just float around and go down to the beach. I actually hate the beach, but you know. Hang out with your friends, play some games, and before you know it, it's all over, and on your deathbed, you can either be like, oh, I was really sad my whole life, being sad that existence is meaningless, or you can be like, that was fucking pretty fun. And if you can, I would suggest choosing to go with a fun path. So what's the meaning of life? Just have a fucking good time. Have a jolly old time. A die was rolled with 120 million sides, and it landed on the fucking face up for you to be born. So you've already won the lottery. You're already the luckiest person ever. Just can chill out and have a laugh, man. How do you feel about people sexualizing Babette? Who's sexualizing Babette? How do I feel about people sexualizing Babette? Babette is of course a vampire in the Dark Brotherhood sanctuary in Skyrim. Now Babette is hundreds of years old from memory, but she got bitten by a vampire when she was a child. So she physically looks like a child, but in terms of age and maturity, she is a ultra wise old vampire. Now at face value, you're like, oh, people sexualizing a child, but it's not. It's sexualizing a really old woman in the shape of a child. Now that is at face value weird to a degree, but there are people born with growth defects in which they never really grow beyond what looks like a child to us. So if you have someone who's 30 years old, but looks like a child in real life, there are people like that in real life. Should they be denied the right to some kind of sexual activity because they look childish? When in reality, they're the age of a, an adult. Uh, I think at face value, it's weird. But if you really think about it, like I have female friends who are adults, you know, like 30, but they look like if they went to school, if they went to high school, you would think they're in like year eight. So do we base someone's right to participate in sexual activities based on the way they look or their age? It's age, right? And Bibette is an old woman. So sexualizing Bibette, bit weird because she looks like a child, but if you break it down, 
that's I think that's fine. What's your zodiac sign? Um, Aquarius. But I used to be Taurus, but I went to the post office and got it changed because I didn't like it. So I changed it to Aquarius. Oh, and look at that. That is the end of the comments from YouTube. So now let's go to Instagram where there are some more questions. Give me a sec. Oh, actually, wait, 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 I got screenshots of them all. So we're going bottom up. Okay. Elder Scrolls 6 plot predictions. Who fucking knows? Probably, I don't know about main plot, but if it's set in Hammerfell slash High Rock, there'll be something to do with the Thalmor trying to take over High Rock. The Imperials, oh sorry, Hammerfell. The Thalmor trying to take Hammerfell. The Imperials kind of being like, hey, we kind of want to help the Red Guards, but also we agreed with the Thalmor would give them Hammerfell, but then Hammerfell is going to both of them. Uh, I would imagine something along those lines. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Chocolate. No question, just love your content and I've been a fan for years. Keep up the amazing work. Oh, thank you very much. I remember seeing your story on Native American people's hair. How did you stumble upon the subject? Um, I don't remember how I stumbled upon it. I look, I think about weird shit all the time and I was like, you never see a bald Native American. And I looked it up and Native Americans do not have a, a gene for baldness. That's why they always have thick, beautiful hair. A decade from now, do you still see yourself making in-depth videos about BGS games or will you retire? I doubt I'll retire. Look, you obviously need to make some money so you can pay bills and travel and whatever. But I think the most important thing is to do what you want to do within reason. Uh, so as long as I want to keep doing it, yeah. I. I definitely think I'll still be doing it. What inspired the name Camelworks? It's an anagram of my actual name. Who is someone you'd love to interview one day? It doesn't have to be someone in video games. Um, probably Todd Howard, honestly. I just talk to him about random stuff. Like I'd want to interview, I think all interviews where it's kind of like a Joe Rogan-ish vibe, where it's just a conversation thing. Way more information comes out. I think I'd like to do something like that. What's your favorite curating curious curiosities you've made? Probably Falkreath. I think Falkreath is the best one. In your opinion, will you ever... Will we ever find out where the Dwemer went? Do you have a theory? There's a bunch of theories. All of them are kind of like, yeah, possibly. Do I think we'll ever find out? Jesus Christ, what happened to them? No. The only reason you're interested in the Dwemer is because they're, it's a mystery. As soon as a mystery is no longer a mystery, no one gives a fuck about it. What metal bands are you listening to these days? I listened to Dimmu Borgu, Death Cult Armageddon the other day, hottest content. Uh, I listened to a bunch of Ramstein today, actually. I've been listening to a lot of Nile recently. A lot of World of Warcraft soundtrack music. It's not a metal band, but and a lot of ambient music. What do you want to see m uh, most in The Elder Scrolls 6 in terms of storyline, RPG elements, features, etc.? I think a more filled in world. Like Morrowind, The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind had the smallest map out of Oblivion and Skyrim. But to me, it felt more filled in. Like there's a bunch of little towns and shit in Skyrim where I'm like, what, it, what it, why does this exist? There's nothing here. Or like you go out into the bush and there's like a hut with a unique named NPC and they just do nothing ever. Like there's no point to them existing. Uh, it actually boils down to these thieving system. So in Morrowind, when you steal something, it doesn't get labeled as stolen. If you steal something, from Bob, and then you go back to Bob and say, hey, Bob, do you want to buy this bowl? Bob will say, hey, that's my bowl. Call the guards. But if you steal Bob's bowl and go next door and sell it to Jim, go, hey, Jim, do you want this bowl? He goes, yeah, sure, I'll buy that bowl. Um, and that, to me, made exploring every nook and cranny in Morrowind's, like, actually exciting. And also, in Morrowind, people had cool, hidden, valuable shit in their house. In Skyrim, no one has got Hey, here's some books, there's some plates, there's like two bottles of wine, there might be like an iron ingot in the corner. You know, Morrowind, like you rummage through someone's house and they've got like a glass dagger under their pillow and stuff like that. Like that made every single boring player, this character has no purpose and their house has no purpose. It gave like an exciting treasure hunt purpose to every single interior in the game. And that was totally lost in oblivion. When they brought in the, you know, the red hands that gets put on any stolen item. You can't sell it to any vendor except the thieves. Blah, blah, blah. It's pretty lame. Yeah, I just want more content. Again, it's not about size. Um, like I said with Morrowind. Morrowind was the smallest of the three out of Skyrim, I believe, in a Morrowind. And Morrowind, in my opinion, had the most content. Do you have any predictions on which way Bethesda will take the game? It's hard to say. I, I mean, I hope that they stick with the you know, single player, open world RPG kind of thing. But beyond that, I'm really not sure.
I hope they don't make sword singing a thing. This is the problem with the Dragonborn and shouts and all that shit is they introduced a new system, but when they make the Elder Scrolls 6 and there is no Dragonborns or shouts, they have to take that system out and I think that's gonna feel like something's missing. Therefore, I think they're gonna come up with a new system to kind of be the shouts of the Elder Scrolls 6. Out of said in Hammerfell, it's gonna be sword scene, but I hope it's not sword scene. What is your favorite question? Uh, do you want a million dollars that I'm gonna give you right now for free? You just have to say yes. That's my favorite question because yes. Why won't you move on from Elder Scrolls? Why would I move on from, from Elder Scrolls? There's infinite content. What's your favorite magical ability in the Elder Scrolls universe? Uh, mark and recall. Actually, that's my actual answer. Favorite metal bands? Uh, oh, God, it's always favorites, man. I don't have a favorite metal band. That's actually my answer. I don't have a favorite. I have favorites of almost nothing. What video are you most proudest? Oh, sorry, I misread that. What video are you the most proudest? Um, boy. Most, pr probably the Augur of Dunlane one. Cat reveal, please. Uh, both my cats are dead. So, <laughs> that's true. It's true. Uh, favorite moment from each game. Main five if you've played all of them. From each game? Each Elder Scrolls game? Favorite moment? Again, uh... Favorite moment is when you first get it and stick it in and you start playing and you go, holy shit. Whoa. Thoughts on islands. Islands cool. I like island. I'll actually be in islands in about a month. What bands are you listening to right now? Um, I'm listening to Cryo Chamber right now, actually. Ever done a battle jacket? I don't know what a battle jacket is. Fave part about your platform, like YouTube, it lets people make creative stuff and then get paid for it. And it also lets people share things with the world. Sounds very weird and like old manny and like something an executive would say to, at a, um, some kind of press, press conference, but it's true. It's true. Like before, like when, you, when YouTube became a thing, it was just like, holy shit, everyone was on YouTube all the time. And even still they are because it's fucking sick. How is life going for you so far? All nice and dandy. Greetings from Germany. Life is, look, everyone's life is filled with challenges and it's more, I'm not too sure what I'm trying to say. Yes, life is good. There's also tons of shit stuff, but everyone's life is full of tons of shit stuff and i think it's important to not be defined by the shit stuff but instead be defined what you do about the shit stuff so with that in mind yes life is pretty good except it's really cold if you were any elder scrolls character who would you be devate fear are you like noodles very much yes yes I like ramen that's like really the only noodle i eat what recent games have been truly an entertaining experience through to the end uh recent games actually i started playing diablo immortal two days ago and my goal with it is to just play it and enjoy it until i clearly have to spend money to kind of keep going um at that point i haven't hit yet it's been fun to play i've probably put like 20 hours into it what's the other thing uh elden ring was fucking sick vampire survivors is sick and it's also like three dollars on steam it's good fun where does the milk from an oat or an almond come from? Uh, I'm pretty sure they mix it with water and then like crush it up. I, I think that's how they milk seemingly unmilkable things. What is something you're most proud of accomplishing during your time doing? Hey, doing, doing YouTube? I think uh, where like I've had some friends who started making YouTube channels and YouTube videos and they'd make like four and they're like, oh, it's so much effort. Oh, oh, I want views like now. I and I. Th I think that is probably one of the things I should be most proud of is just sticking with it, you know? Like I didn't make any money. In my first year of YouTube, I made about $3,000. I, I can't even tell you how many videos I made. Okay, so in the first 12 months of my YouTube channel existing, I uploaded 117 videos. So that's like a video every three days on average. While also for six months of that i studied a multimedia course because i was like i don't really know what i'm doing in terms of video production so i want to you know learn how to use photoshop premiere pro all that shit. 
So I went and did a six month multimedia course and I also uh, owned and ran my own online business. So I think, yeah, just having, uh, I don't know what you call it, the fucking metal to just keep going and not upload four videos and be like, oh, boo hoo. I'm not fucking famous. Uh, it's like, dude, I, again, while working a full-time job, while studying full-time for six months of it and uploading 117 videos, I made $3,000. Um, and I think just having the fucking tenacity and stubbornness to just keep going and not be deterred by not getting views and money for the first, you know, 12 months of my career. And then once the Fallout 4 stuff started coming out in 2015 is when I kind of, you know, I made like $60,000 in the second year of YouTube or something. So yeah, what am I most proud of? I mean, obviously there's heaps of content that I'm most proud of, but I think initially that initial just, fuck it, I'm just going to keep going until I am certain it's not going to work or it does work and it did work. But again, I've no plenty of people who tap out after making four videos and I made 117 videos and I'm still getting fuck all money and was like, keep going. Keep going. How long will your merch be up? If it dips before I can afford something, I would cry. If it dips, how long will it be up? It's up forever. What conditioner do you use? Olaplex. Are you excited for Skywind? Yes. Do you smoke weed, the devil's lettuce? I do not. I know I look like the ultimate weed smoking machine, but I don't. Uh, it makes me super, super sick. And also laughing, I laugh all the time. I don't need a drug to help me laugh. Making me sleepy, I don't need help being sleepy. Lazy, I don't need help being lazy. Like all the things weed does don't interest me at all. And it also makes me fucking super sick. Like within five minutes, I will be vomiting violently for hours. Like, oh dude, it was just bad weed. Then we'll try this one. <laughs> Same thing. Like, I, I've probably I've probably smoked weed like 10 times in my life, and every time I'm like, I am very unwell. Uh, story behind the name Camel Works is an anagram. How long has your hair gotten? And did you trim it at all? How long is this? I don't know. Roughly fucking, I don't know, like fucking. Yeah, it's about 60 centimeters. Well, that very rough measure. And yeah, I've got it trimmed a bunch. What hair products do you use? Olaplex. Come on, guys. Will you ever do Fallout CCC? Probably not. How much do you... How do you have such impeccable drip? It's because I'm covered in my, my own merch. Fucking get the old camel beanie going. Smoke skooma, worship camel. Yes, please. Daedric on the sleeves. Skooma bottle. And pipe on the back. Somewhere. I mean, this is hot content. Got any major plans in the next five years you want to achieve? Not particularly. Enjoy myself, make good content, and those two things lead to stuff like money. Spirit, you prefer most often and favorite scotch. I don't like scotch or whiskey. Um, spirit would be gin, probably. Gin and tonic. With that said, I don't really drink gin and tonic that often. What have you been up to? I've been working and running errands for other people. Would a donkey be attracted to horse if they were neighbors? Oh, it's my friend, Josh. Uh, would a donkey be attracted? Probably. Honestly, probably. That's how mules are made. Any big plans for the channel going forward? Same, same as before. Make good content and enjoy it. Also, what kind of computer specs for the level Skyrim modding you've done? What are my computer specs? Big. Got a 3090 in there. There's an AMD Ryzen 9 3950X RAM. There's 128 gigs of some fucking fast RAM. Fucking fans up the wazoo. We've got a uh, closed loop water cooling for the CPU. And then a lot of solid state drives and M.2 drives. And with that, we have finished the Q&A. Thank you for hanging out. Um, I hope that answered well, it literally answered about 120 questions. If you have any questions you'd like me to answer, put them in the comment section of this video. And next time I do a q and I'll come to this video, look at the questions here, and then we'll, we'll um, answer those. I think going forward, I'll do Q&As. Like, I don't mind, answering questions is fun. Um, I just did way too much of it when I did the monthly series. So I think going on from now i'll do q a's at like milestone points like hundred thousand every hundred thousand subs or whatever anyway i have to leave 
very shortly because I'm going to go and see Penn and Teller, which I didn't know was happening until my friend said, hey, do you want to come to Penn and Teller tonight? And I went, yeah. So yeah, I'm going to go to that. Thank you very much for watching. Um, leave your questions for next time down the bottom and um, we'll answer them when we hit 800,000 subs. I'll see you then. I'll see you in the next video. Actually, come check out the uh, stream on Twitch. And then you, I'll see you really soon. Anyway, bye.